Hey, what's happening? One of the things that I wanted to do in WebWatcher, which is a part of the video ministry, was to give you a panoramic view or perspective, as you can see here, that the computer is right over here. That you are able to obviously view what's going on on the screen at the same time as you're seeing me. Because with WebWatcher, we want to be able to look at some of the ministries that are out there that are developing and possibly you know, influencing us in a way that can be both positive and negative at times, especially in the area of prophecy, like today's version of WebWatcher right now will be about prophecy. Because one of the things that I find is that people are too easily persuaded or jumping on the bandwagon to say, oh, oh, oh no, look at that, the sky is falling. But the reality is, is that a lot of websites, for instance, like Bible Prophecy Blog or you know, I could probably go into quite a few of them, you know, that are prophecy sites, whether it be Now the End is Coming or Ariel Ministries or, boy, you go through just about anything. And you can find all kinds of interesting information. But the problem with knowing about information is what is opinion and what is fact. Because we can all go through obviously every website there is out there using google to google prophecy and find the latest oh no or we could maybe sit back and say well what is a valid legitimate prophecy statement or prophecy site or possibly even a a reason to look at this page and say oh well that's interesting you know today on monday october 10th we're talking about fast and furious so Selling guns to the Mexican cartel has a lot to do with prophecy. Okay, it sounds political to me, so maybe that's a political piece. Or we scroll down, you know, a little bit and we see that they're talking about, you know, and they've used from Rapture Ready, Terry James' piece on isolating Israel. Well, yeah, that's prophecy, you know, but Again, when you start to read it, you kind of go, hmm, is it prophecy or is it political? Are we learning something about the signs of the times and is it bringing us closer to the knowledge of Jesus Christ? Or is it just kind of one of those pieces that you go, well, that's interesting, but you know, it's kind of not really prophetic. It's just kind of like tickling our fancy because there are pieces out there like, for instance, Rapture Ready. You know, Rapture Ready on their site notoriously always has articles that are either featuring guest artists or they have information that's readily available for you to study about the rapture. So one of the things I want to do when we're doing Web Watcher, especially on Prophecy Watch, is that I want to not criticize so much the other ministries that are out there because they have their purpose. I mean, even if we went to uh, WND, you know, and looked at their site, which obviously is a tabloid, I mean, Everyone knows that you don't trust, you know, World Net Daily because it is a tabloid. I mean, come on. How many times do you have to read some of the pieces in here to know that this is all about somebody making money off of the web for their own use? You know, and God bless, you know, Joseph Farah for what he's doing, you know, and his own mindset about making money because, hey, tabloids have to make a, and earn a living too. So in their own way, you know, they're out there, you know, doing their thing. But when you start reading about birth certificates or President Obama and you start looking at all these things and then you start reading the articles and the facts and you see, well, wait a minute, what source? Oh, well, it was a secret source that we only have as a WND exclusive. But they told us, seriously, they really did. Honestly, really, 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 they did. <laughs> OK, sure, they did. That's like me telling you that, hey, guess what? I just found out from my sources, the web that it's possible, maybe, it could be that there is a slight, maybe, you know, infinitesimal chance that Jesus is coming back yesterday. <gasps> really? <gasps> Did we miss it? <laughs> so, in WebWatch, when we do prophecy, we're not always going to give you, you know, kudos for what you're doing, but we're going to try to say, look, let's be real, folks. Jesus is coming. He's coming back in our generation. So let's prepare for that. Let's don't hype people up 
to fall away from God because he didn't come in 2011 like <gasps> we got all wound up with Harold Camping to do or we got all excited because some of our favorite Bible pastors or teachers, especially in the Midwest, with all the prophecy conferences all geared towards the East Coast, you know, all said, oh, well, Jesus is coming back this year, or it may be, it may be. And there's always that maybe. Well, I'm gonna tell you straight up from our perspective here at WebWatch and on prophecy perspectives. It ain't gonna happen. Sorry, not this year. It just doesn't fit prophecy. There's not enough evidentiary in scriptures to fulfill what we would call the puzzle of the pieces fit completely in order to coordinate God's revelation to us that he always does what he says he's going to do ahead of time through his prophets, but he does it exactly the way he says he's going to. There is no question of inventing some way for it to fit, which is the popular preview right now of prophecy in the web and prophecy by conferencing, you know, and getting people hyped up about some obscure piece in order to teach them about the solid pieces of scripture that we know is true. So sometimes, you know, it may be that, you know, you're being kind of like, you know, a little wound up with, you know, too much uh, prophecy caffeine, or is that prophecy caffeine, to get all excited about something that in order to generate you to study like you should do, to know the signs of the times, to know the seasons that we live in, to get to the place where God wants us to be in order to know the scriptures and to know his coming is soon, that people will exaggerate. And that's probably why I've gone out of my way now to open up WebWatch to prophecy, you know, and to say, hey, we need to really kind of, you know, back off, Jack, because guess what? The emperor's new clothes are naked, you know, and we're going to stand before him without our, our props around us with all these supposed sources and all this quote unquote new idea about what happened. And we're going to answer to Jesus about why we told someone something was going to happen and didn't. I don't want to be there for that day. I would rather say, hey, this is an opinion. This is my personal opinion based upon 30 years of study, but it's still just an opinion. So when you read things and examine the scriptures and you study for yourselves prophecy, just remember to, if you're talking to someone else, please add that little part. It's my opinion, because your opinion can be influenced by your perspective, depending upon where you're at and what God is doing in you, as well as how he's leading you to discover something to learn something he may take you off on a tangent you know kind of like way off into left field in order for you to understand something that's in right field like the fence <laughs> the baseline oh okay you know or really the reality of him leading you and teaching you the way he wants to if he chooses to by his holy spirit so i hope that this will begin to inspire people to study the scriptures more and not follow the popular prophecy expert, you know, and to treat them with a general air of, that's interesting, now let me verify it. That's fascinating, now let me prove it. That's okay, but now let me go back and make sure that it fits within the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, those who are being prepared for Jesus' return. Because we all are going to meet Jesus, and some of us are going to be standing there side by side, even though we don't think that we deserve to be there, and you don't think that maybe someone else deserves to be there. They'll be there anyways. So in some ways, that's a joy. But for some Christians, for some reason, that seems to be a problem. So let's today, you know, examine our perspectives on prophecy and realize that the spirit of prophecy is about Jesus. It's not about Israel. It's not about end times. It's not about Armageddon. It's not about any other thing except for the book, the last book of the Bible, which is a very blunt statement of what the entire scripture is all really about. The revelation of Jesus Christ. That's prophecy, folks, in a nutshell. It's about him, not about us. So let's take a look at What's going on on the web? I'm WebWatch, and particularly let's study what prophecy and what prophecy sites are doing lately.